had lots of scripting that had to take place to make the, everything happen. You know, things, the, the magic happen. I'm camming back here. I'm looking at, uh, I don't know what to call these. They're like blue rectangles. The last two have your name at the top in pink. And there looks like a picture of the, the silhouettes on a um, gold fire. Like, and it says 12, 13, 13, 16, 15. Let's go under stage and we'll tell, I'll show you, I'll show you the guts of SLTC. I okay. love it. Can you double click uh, teleport? Do you know how to do that? Yes, I do. Okay, just uh, camera down and double click on the gray floor below you. I am there. Let's back up over here and so we can kind of look at the whole thing together back. This is called the green room. Or, or we call it understage. We don't oh. have side stage and backstage. We have understage. And this is an adaptation uh, that I fell into as I start tried to make the, the process that I'm familiar with in, in the real world work here. It didn't work. The backstage and the side stage doesn't work as well. And I I discovered that understage is really uh, the better way to approach this. You just saw this this show yesterday. So at the very beginning, you saw uh, uh, Diva Shri, the first uh, Bali number, and each number of the show is represented by one of these numbers on the back back wall, and the the choreographer of that number will um, will. Uh, list the dancers and where they stand in where that what pad what mover pad they stand on and what group on his dance hud they're on and the little ball at the top is the remote to put them on their uh, this the ball at the top when I zoom now, in I see a rotating sphere that that's says it. okay so that is an animated object that will well, the, it puts them on the right dance HUD. The n other number you see there where it's the uh, pad. Let's do in the air. In the air is a better example. Mover, pad, okay. Now, uh, if you look at the one that says in the air, it would be number five. I'm going to res the pads. I go under stage over here. Now, you notice that it says five over here on, on my on this pad on the floor, which corresponds to what the number is on the back wall. So now, if I, if you, uh, if you would get, if you click on, click on number. Um, okay, I see um, some. I see some purple squares with uh, red and green arrows, and they all say carrier. Uh, click on the one that's the one that says it tells you to sit on it or dance or what. I forget I, what it calls. Says. I do just, see the sit thing. Just click on it. It'll work. Okay. There you go. And I'm going to click on three. Okay. Now, what this does is the dancer uh, on the back wall there is told what pad to get on. And this is the pad. Ah. And for number, let's see, you are on number five. Five is Hannah's pad. And I'm on number three, which is Christia's pad. And so when it's time to go on stage, you saw the fog comes up, what set change as I click that on my screen, and then we go like this Whoa. and we end up on stage. And we go <laughs> to the top of the stage. Wow. Right, right. Now I don't have the dance hut on on my screen right now, but then this is where you dance. Now oh, in relationship to where you really are during this. Oop. Oh, no. Okay, no. I see the Just background. Painting. Wow. Yep. Yep. I'm, you're you're in the mess of the background right now. I'm, so now you're you're on it, and now you're going to come out from the bushes here into the thing. So this, if you look at it now, it, look of in front of you, and you'll see the theater now. And I let me just turns, do that. Mm -hmm. This is how we get on stage. And I could move you through the dance. Uh, I'm not moving you the, the dance HUD because I don't have that on my screen right now. But uh, the dance HUD is only part of it. It's getting you moved in stage that is also important too. So this would take you to the sides. 
and I'm moving all the time. This is moving. I'm moving this during the dance while the animations are running. This is the one where we did the uh, the the duet with the the backup with the. So when we're all done, when, we're at, when we get to the end... Let, let me just ask one other thing. I noticed that there are some mm -hmm. other... Uh, squares on the floor so that's because mm -hmm. we don't have all the dancers here right if the that's right there's a dancer on each one of those you saw me dance on let's see three this is my my pad here uh, let's see. Oh, I can't get on it here because there's a floor thing there but I'm usually on one right there in the front so when the dance is done and this the fog comes down over the stage then I just push this and you end up back where you were and then I dump you. <laughs> I dump you off like that. <laughs> that. That is awesome. And and you go to usually there every other one. Since you started on five, you would probably be in dance number seven. That's it's usually every other dance if you're a dancer, depending upon how many dancers I have. But that's I just thought it, you'd get the feel of how it works down here. Each one of these things on the back, uh, obviously the prints all different. Each each choreographer puts the print on the on the back wall, and the numbers correspond to the numbers on the floor. Well, if if I understand this right, you have uh, eleven numbers on the wall, which mm -hmm. was that. So there were like eleven dances in the show, mm -hmm. and. Um, and then this keeps all 27 people coordinated. They they alternate who's in which dance. Now, yes. what do they have to do besides know which number to sit on? <laughs> <laughs> if you're just dancing and not choreographing, uh, you are you are in. You're usually in about every other dance, depending upon the show. And uh, with if you're not dancing, like for instance, if you were a dancer and you were dancing on number five, you would probably when you when you get dumped off, you would go down. Your pads for seven will already be here, ready for you to go. You get on the pad, and then they change their outfit to whatever it is that they have to do. Uh, they still have to you change know? outfits. Oh yeah, they ha and they change outfits while number six is dancing. They're wow. changing outfits. When six is done, they go up on stage, and number eight is getting ready, which is back. I think over here, where is eight? I don't remember where eight is exactly. Oh, uh, in this case, fire and rebirth uh, are both eight and nine, so they would be getting over here. So it's it it looks complicated, but once the dancers get under understand the system, they just jump right from one to the next. So that's only what happens when we're actually to the point of getting uh, on the pads and getting on the stage. Before that, the reason you see all these balls here is everybody stands on the ball, everybody gets on the huds, and then we test everybody. We have to test to make sure they're on the right HUD at the right time, What they're, so that when that's all done before the show, none of it happens during the show. They are, everything is pre-done before, and there we make sure that they're on the right pad, on the right thing, and then they're excused to go to their first position. Okay, so if I clicked one of these balls, what would happen? Just get on it. Try it. I, for, I have to turn my interface on to see it <laughs> okay okay so i just understand sit on just it just click on yeah just click on one of the balls there okay so now each member of the company has their own you know you're standing uh, on kiko's uh -oh. right now that's all right uh kiko uh, and you see i have the males and the females now the reason that's important is that 
a lot of times uh, they will have different groups did if they have to do solo work and it's easier for us to test to make sure they're on the HUD if they're separated when they're all mixed together we have to say, oh well well I thought we had three you know and so we can see them better when they're when they're separated like this so um, and then how do this you is, test this well okay let's see if I can I'm I'm looking forward to doing some kind of sinuous aesthetic you dance. want it you want you want to test okay let's let's do this um i am going to send you a invitation okay now you're going to get a note accept it and then you're going to get a blue note and i want you to click on number four okay i clicked okay then i'm going to click on number four here i go right Mm -hmm. Okay, so now you're on group four in in the air, which means that you're going to be on the left side of the stage. Okay. And so there and there is your first one. And, there you go. Um, oh wow. Okay. <clears throat> so I'm I am I'm da I am dancing you right now. I love it. Okay, I am dancing you. And you notice I'm entering and I'm doing something different now because sure my are. group is is group one. And you're in, in pose now while I'm dancing. Now, it doesn't have to be. You could be dancing at the same time I am, but then the audience would be distracted. So you notice that. And that is a classical technique that a lot of people here don't understand. If you have two things moving differently together at the same time, your audience gets confused. I think, what is going on? This looks messy. Let me just emphasize that. What's <laughs> happening is... I am the accompanist and I was standing in a poise while Carol the soloist danced and then uh -huh. and then when you now, picked okay, it go ahead. Uh -huh. when you picked it then we started again together in sync uh -huh. and That's all the right. time music is playing in the background and we shifted on cue which I've never seen that in any other performance in any virtual environment Carol well that's because they don't they don't function in groups as highly as I do. And you'll also notice that we do not stand in a line for more than just a few seconds at a time. We will constantly be moving and using the space. Now see, I'm, I'm doing the soloist position here. It's a lift and the core is in pose. And I'm going to turn here in a minute. Uh, and then you're going to join me again. The core joins back in in a second so that you highlight the things that you want the audience to see or focus on by the stillness of the uh, of the core but that's that's because that's my training i mean it shows me that's sec it, it's second nature i now now the core joins us and we're together now <clears throat> and yeah. i noticed earlier that you part of your lift it looked like you were being held up by another dancer who's not i here. was <laughs> <laughs> and and so that demonstrates how each dancer has their own custom animation in sync. Right. With, now with this the music. You, you're number four. I'm number one. And the missing one that you saw on that lift, it's gonna happen again here in just a minute. You're gonna see me dancing, but you see my partner's not here right now. And so um uh, but he's I'm dancing in group two. I'm at group one and he's grouping group two. There's uh uh, group three and group four. Only four groups in this one. There you go. You're floating. Okay, and and I'm not alone here. Uh, my partner is is with me. Now the thing is, is that we have such a limited amount of of couples animations in SL that it get you have to be really careful not to get boring with your choreography because you have to use what's available and this is the grand end right here right that's it mm -hmm. okay good okay so unanimate so that, <laughs> <laughs> unanimate you that's not that's not hard to do all i do is click that and i remove you that's it you're all gone right. and this is what you train them on right this is how they get uh, trained train. ahead of time well they're trained as a dance. All the dancers are trained to understand what's going on here. And it only takes a couple. I do an orientation for new people uh, a couple weeks before um, rehearsal starts. And I come in and I explain all this. 
and I take them through just pretty much what you're doing right now. I, I'm showing them how it works, what they're going to be doing, and how it, how it functions. Thank you.